Hi everyone and welcome back to Miss Estric Biology and I hope you're having an amazing summer which you totally deserve. In this video I'm going to be talking you through student loans because it is getting closer to the time of results day and finding out are you off to university which I'm pretty sure you will be. So I'm going to tell you what you need to know about applying for a student loan, what you might be entitled to and probably most importantly how to budget to make sure you don't run out of your student loan. So step one is understanding student loans. Now in the UK you're entitled to two different types of loans that you can apply for. There is the tuition fees loan and the maintenance loans. So the tuition fees loans will cover your tuition fees. So what that means is you'll be given a lump sum to pay for your tuition fees each year and then at the end you got to pay it all back gradually over time. The maintenance loans are to cover your living. So that is for things like your accommodation, food and whatever else you might need to survive. Now with the maintenance loan there are different amounts different people are entitled to based on your family income but all of this is explained on the government website so definitely check out the government website so you can see what you are entitled to one little piece of advice is bear in mind that you've got to pay all of this back so even if you are entitled to absolutely loads if after doing some budgeting you think you might not need that amount then you don't necessarily have to take that full amount because you will have to pay it all back and for context I've only just paid back my student loan this year and I'm 35 and I would have been paying it back for quite a bit longer but in the end I decided just to pay a lump sum to get it all gone so I didn't have to keep paying it back every month so step two then is how to apply for your student loan now for this you will need to go to the government website which I'm showing you just just here. You'll need to fill in a selection of personal details about you, your parents or guardians so that they can work out how much money you are entitled to for your maintenance loan. Now I would highly recommend that you do this as soon as possible if you haven't done it yet. The reason for this is loads of students are applying for the student loans and it's typically given out on a first come first serve. Now you will get the money but the year that I went to university, which to be fair is a long time ago now, there were delays in the student loans. There was some issue that happened and what that meant was that people that had applied later through the summer they didn't get their loans until about November so they really struggled for the first month so because of that I always tell my students now apply as soon as possible just so there's no chance that could happen to you and then step three this is the big one and that is budgeting. Once you've got your loan and maybe you might be getting some money from your parents or guardian as well or from a part-time job you might have, it's how to budget it to make sure that you can make this money go as far as possible because trust me you're going to feel poor as a student. Step number one I would recommend is tracking your spending. So in particular in the first month, so whether that's October for you or September, in the first few months definitely track where all your money is going and there's loads of budgeting apps on your phones that you can use to help you do this or you could just use a simple excel spreadsheet so just have a look through your bank account and see how much money was spent on accommodation travel food clothes books study resources nights out whatever it might be just so you can work out where is most of your money going and then from that you can have a bit of an idea of which of those things are absolutely essential which of them are luxuries and therefore make sure that each month you are definitely leaving enough money for the essentials and then see how much you've got left for luxury so you can pick and choose what you're going to spend your luxury money on my next tip for budgeting is secondhand clothes and accessories now I am absolutely obsessed with vintage. I get so many of my clothes from vintage and they are just as good quality as it is new but so cheap. They're like two pounds instead of 40 pounds. Plus it's sustainable and so much better for the environment. So definitely check out something like vintage to get your hands on lots of cheap clothes. Next tip is ways to save on textbooks. Now textbooks are really expensive and you will be given a selection of course books that you do need. Now for me I went to university back in, I can't even remember now, I think it was 2007 was my first year and my biology resources, I had to buy three books in first year and that came to £100, which is a lot of money now, but think about how much that was worth back in 2007 as well. It's a lot of money and I bought those new. So I would totally recommend that instead you buy your textbooks secondhand. So have a look on things like Amazon Marketplace, see if you can get some secondhand textbooks and save yourself a lot of money. The next 
next budgeting idea is saving money when it comes to cooking. Now this only applies obviously if you are in self-catered accommodation, but even if you're not, when it comes to being out of accommodation next year and you're in your own houses as a house share, it'll be relevant then. So food is obviously essential, but there's a range of ways that you can make this cheaper and more affordable. So the first things I'd recommend is making sure that you are taking full advantage of frozen food and tinned food. Now by that, I mean like frozen vegetables, it could be tinned vegetables. Now they get a bad rap. Let's just start there. They do get a bad rap because it's tinned or frozen, but often they have the same nutritional value, but they are much, much cheaper than the fresh produce and they last longer. So you're less likely to have wastage, which again is going to save money. Now coming to cooking again, another great way to save money is batch cooking. So instead of making yourself like one different meal every single day, why don't you instead at the weekend just find a time where you can batch cook an entire curry, chili, bolognese, whatever it is that you like and make enough for maybe five to seven meals and then just portion it into little sandwich freezer bags or if you've got little tub Tupperware containers, put it into the freezer and then you've got a meal that you can have any day of the week. It will last for at least three to six months. So you've now got your food ready to save you time and it's so much cheaper to cook batching that way than cooking an entire meal that is different every single day, buying loads of different ingredients. Equally, you can save a lot of money if you decide to cook as a household. And that's what I did for some of the months I was at university. I was in house with six students and we all decided we were going to take one day a week that we were going to cook for the entire household. And that meant you were only buying food for one day a week and you only had to cook one day a week. And then the seventh day, we probably had a takeaway or something like that, which negated the whole money saving idea, but we had fun. Now the next money saving tip for your budgeting is look for student discounts. You've probably done this for years anyway, because you were students already, but make sure you're using in websites like Student Beans where you get loads of student discounts and definitely make full use of them. And if you don't know if a shop offers student discounts, just ask when you're at the checkout and make sure you've always got your student ID card on you so that you can present it and potentially get that discount. The next budgeting idea is consider some part-time work. Now I didn't do that in first year because for me personally, I found first year busy and overwhelming enough, but in second year and third year, I did. I worked at my student union bar as part-time work for the whole of my second and third year. And I did still have plenty of time to do my work and to socialize. And this gave me a good chunk of money whilst making a whole new range of friends and developing social skills and developing skills that were really good for my CV. Okay, so that's it. That is a wrap on student loans and budgeting. Hopefully you now feel a bit more confident about how to apply for your student loans, what you might be entitled to, and essentially how to budget your money to make sure you don't run out of money as well. If you have found it helpful, make sure that you are still subscribed so you don't miss out on my entire university preparation series to get you ready for this huge and exciting adventure you're about to go on.